Commissioner. So good to see you. So good to see you on that side of the table. <laughs> well, um, one of the biggest complaints that I often get from advocates who bring workers forward and back when we were working together, it's one of the things that we still heard, was the difficulty in once the DOL made a finding of wages owed, of wage theft, of actually recovering those funds. So one of the things that I, we'd love clarity on is um, the 35 million that you mentioned, is it assessed or is it actually returned to workers? Returned to workers. And how is that being done now? Because in the past, it used to be assessed and, and we would have difficulty actually enforcing that and getting the workers to to feel like they could trust the Department of Labor and get the money back. And that's one of the main reasons why all, all workers would often opt for other options other than the Department of Labor? That is a great question. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, it is sometimes difficult to collect. Sometimes employers close their businesses and reappear under another name. You know, they disappear into the night. Uh, those bad players are bad across the spectrum, not just in wages, and we chase them as much as we can, and you know how difficult it is. But we are really focused on making sure we can get that money back. One of the, you know, uh, Oftentimes, not all of these by any stretch of the imagination, but some of these workers are, are undocumented. And so that makes it harder to find them. We make every effort in every community to make sure that those workers understand we are not interested in your documentation. That is not our job. We can't enforce federal regulations on immigration. Our job is to make sure that you are protected under New York State law. And we've made some good progress. We've been working with the Department of State on immigrant issues, doing a lot of outward. You know, you did a lot of it before you left us and went to the other side. <laughs> so you know what that's like. But it's really, the last couple of years have really been great. And I'm very proud of the record that we've begun to build working with immigrant workers. And speaking of immigrant workers, what is the Department of Labor doing to encourage uh, workers to actually come forward um, when you have instances uh, of retaliation that we're often seeing in the news where workers are being told, if you come forward, we're going to get you deported? Is the um, it's the anti-retaliation unit still in place, oh, and how very is that much functioning? So. Yes, it is a very active unit. Um, I happily say it's, I believe, five women who are doing all of this anti-retaliation work at the DOL. I think they've added one man. But they, uh, they're very good at their jobs, and they take it very seriously. And I, you know, again, we've worked very closely with the Department of State to make sure that the immigrant community knows that we're here to help and the governor is interested in making sure that they're protected in this state. So um, as difficult as the national immigration picture may be, we're working very hard in New York State to make sure that all workers are protected. And lastly, on uh, farm workers, what is the average wage of a farm worker right now? Because what we often hear is if that if the Farm Worker Bill of Rights were to pass, uh, we'd have a downfall of our farming industry. So I'm wondering what is the average wage of a farm worker right now? So interestingly, and I think it varies from, of course, from region to region and what kind of farming you do, whether you're a dairy farmer or a grower and seasonal and all that kind of stuff. But um, the average income for a, a worker is actually above minimum wage across the state. Now part of that's because many of them use the H-1B visas and they are paid a higher wage by contract. Um, I'm, the governor asked us to set up an ag labor committee, Richard Ball and I did it three years ago, and um, remarkably, it's working remarkably well. So this was really the Hatfields and the McCoys. It was the advocates and the farms, the farm owners, and they were not used to sitting and collectively talking to each other. Three years later, we have very productive meetings about a lot of issues that they have a mutual concern about, housing, uh, protecting their workers on the farms from raids, that kind of thing. So we are really making progress. And it's a great example of something I deeply believe in, is even though you may not agree with each other, come to a table and find the thing in the middle of the table you can talk about, and then work to the outside. And it's we're making a lot of progress, and I'm very happy to say that that I think farm workers are in a better place today than they were three years ago, thanks to the governor. 
Thank you, Commissioner. And just as in, in closing, I'd encourage the Department of Labor to continue some of the work we started with the consulates. Unfortunately, as we see more and more immigrants being removed and returned to their home countries, we are going to see workers who are going to be owed wages and who are not going to be able to collect the wages that they rightfully work to earn. And so we had started conversations with the consulates to be able to re at least get them the money that they worked for. Right. Thank and you, I know that we've been able to send some checks out of the country to some of those workers. Thank you, Commissioner.